any issues at all with these glow shift gauges. My boost gauge seems to be pretty darn accurate when I get into it and the turbo starts to build boost on the 24 valve. The EGT gauge is nice and buttery smooth going all the way up to where it needs to go and then dropping back down it doesn't seem to have any issues. Like right now it's riding at a cool 220 while I'm sitting here idling which is that's good that's where it should be and my fuel pressure gauge is reading 17 and it's not bobbing up and down and stuff well that's because of the snubber valve in the in the line but still uh, I, I just I guess I don't understand why people hate glow shift so much because they're really not that bad man they, they work they get the job done and they're way more cost efficient than uh, ISPRO or whatever other gauge you might want to run the one problem that I was talking about before that I was kind of unsure of why it was happening and I said that I was going to look at it and see if I could figure out what was going on but when I would start the truck and the gauges would go back to the original color, the stock color, if you will, which was blue and not stay on the green color that I have them set to. So these gauges have a memory function, and I've talked about it a few times, where they're supposed to remember the color that you set them to, and every time you start the truck, if installed properly, wired properly, all that, when you start the truck, it's supposed to remember which color setting you had the gauges on, and then go back to that color. Well, I was running into a little hiccup with these glow shift gauges, and when I would start the truck, one of them would turn blue and the other ones would stay green or two of them would turn blue or all three of them would turn blue literally would change every time it, it wasn't any one specific gauge well this is why i don't hate the glow shifts and i i can't because that problem isn't here anymore that problem was due to the fact that the batteries on my cummins were just getting weak they were getting bad so every time i would start the truck it's almost like because there wasn't enough draw and power being kicked out from the batteries, almost like they were hitting like a dead spot or something, it was it was most likely tripping these glow shift gauges and making them think that they got disconnected from the battery and then resetting them. So now with the new batteries in the Cummins, the glow shift gauges are staying the way that they need to. They're staying right on the green color. The memory function is working and I haven't seen them go back to the blue color since we installed the new batteries last week. So that is good and that is why I don't hate glow shift gauges but what is up guys welcome back to another video on pure panorama do you realize that today is like the four week mark of me doing an upload every single day Woo! oh that didn't sound good that truck looked nice that was a nice OBS power stroke right there but what the hell kind of noise was it making? No, but seriously, four weeks, daily uploads by yours truly. Hit that like button right now just for that, man. But I just went to Lowe's on my way home from work to pick up some Rust Reformer. While Lowe's used to carry Rust-Oleum products, they still do, I should say. They still have some Rust-Oleum paints, um, but they used to carry the undercoating that I use on the 24 valve and other products for the automotive scene, I guess I would say. Well, one of those products is the rust reformer, which I need. That is a critical step that I am, I need to do on the frame of the Cummins before we go ahead and undercoat it. So I popped in the Lowe's just now on my way home and was fully intending on going in there to get some rust reformer so that we could get underneath the truck this weekend and start to work our way maybe from the back towards the front because I haven't degreased the front yet. So probably starting in the back, we got to finish the wire wheeling and some sanding and stuff um, from the rear wheels back to the rear bumper. But I wanted to get that 
try to get that done anyways and then maybe start hitting it with some rust reformer to uh get that rust kind of sealed up and locked in so that we can start hitting it with the undercoating. Well, uh, I didn't know this, but I went into Lowe's and apparently Lowe's has switched their product line and they're now carrying Cryon? Creon? Cre cry I don't know, but I was about to cry in the aisle because they didn't have the Rust-Oleum. So I, di I, don't, I didn't know what to do. So basically I got one can and we're gonna give it a shot, but this is what I'm talking about, Krylon. That, that's what I'm talking about. This is rusty metal, which I'm assuming is supposed to be like Rust-Oleum's rust reformer. And uh, we are gonna go ahead and use that one can to kind of see how it does. I didn't, I didn't want to go hand bananas and start stocking up on this stuff and you know taking up stock in the company or anything. So I don't, I don't know anything about it really. But I figured, what the hell? I'm here. I'm kind of feeling a little lazy and not wanting to go two blocks down to the AutoZone or Advanced Auto and get the stuff that I know they sell there, which is the Rust-Oleum. So we got that, we uh, we got home and we're gonna give that stuff a shot this weekend and see, I guess, how it works. But in the meantime, I wanna show you guys a little something that I discovered Tuesday, Wednesday, when I was out here on 4th of July, getting stuff ready on the truck to go to the fireworks with the kids i was just out here kind of looking the truck over and noticed this can you guys pick that up it might be kind of hard to see it but do you see this nice little outline right here yes that is in fact a big bubble in the paint right here on this driver's side fender that was not there before. That is from this past winter. Stuff getting up in there uh, and just, it's starting to expand and bubble that paint up. It's just a matter of time now and I really don't think it'll be much time before that actually starts to split and really just pop open. So I think it's time that uh, Josh goes and gets some stuff to start learning maybe how to do some body work because any of those little spots on the front fenders or over the rear wheel wells back there, I think are still in good enough shape to where I can uh, sand them down, get rid of all the nasty metal, the rust and stuff, get it down to good metal and then do something about it with some body filler if I have to. I do have have a dent up here on this fender also so I might be able to try and get like a little hammer like a little ball peen or something a little body hammer up in there and kind of tap that dent out a little bit just so it, it it's really tough to see it you got to look at the right angle but we're gonna see if we can if we can knock that dent out a little bit and get rid of it but I definitely want to try and hit all these little rust spots and see if I can't clear them up so it's like the passenger side fender on the Cummins is it's decent, man. This one is fine. I don't see any big old spots or anything. It's actually in pretty nice shape. Walk around over here though, and we have this nice spot here above the headlight that's all busted up from when I hit the deer. And yes, I know I need to replace it. And I don't know why it's taking me this long to do it. Maybe I just kind of feel attached to it because I took out Bambi's mom. <laughs> Psych! But we do need to take care of this little spot here, and that is actually from the deer's head. Uh, whack. Yeah, you know the rest of the story. But then right here, we do have like the paint chipping and flaking too, and this is where the dent is. You can actually probably see it, how the paint kind of, you can see it a little bit there. But I think we can tap that out, and it's all bubbled up right here too, just because it's dented, it split the paint. Uh, so we gotta try and see if we can get this whole edge of the fender maybe cleaned up. I don't know, I feel like I have nothing to lose, honestly. Uh, worst case scenario, <laughs> we get a new fender off of a, off of a donor truck and go to town on that and see what we can do. If we uh, make our way on down the truck, we have a couple little dings and chips and stuff down here. We got some stuff going on on the corner of this door, which we're catching early enough to where we could probably take care of that without replacing this rear door. Definitely have a little bit of bubbling happening up in here um, and this is where all the little side moldings were all those little trim pieces that if you have on your truck you want to get rid of that crap because all that does is rot your body away dirt junk grime uh, even if you live in southern states that stuff is no good it will just hold dirt and moisture in there and it will just it will not benefit the truck's body at all it does not doesn't look good first of all and second of all 
it will do damage to the paint and the body of the truck. Now this right here on the top of the rocker and where you step into the truck, that's uh, obviously from a foot pulling, pulling people up into the truck and stuff. Uh, that, I don't know what we're gonna do yet because we obviously have that spot cut out from where it was starting to rot. And I don't know if that can just have a small piece kind of tack welded in place there and then just kind of freshen it up with paint down through here. We got to see if we can save that spot on this door. And if we can't, then we're going to be looking for a new driver's door. But otherwise, the driver's side is pretty decent until you get down to here. Then we have some more bubbling here over the rear wheel. Uh, but that's, that's basically it on the driver's side. So I think that we are going to maybe, <laughs> maybe start to do some homework and some research to try and maybe dive into this stuff and start to take care of it at least start getting the rust kind of taken down and seeing what we can do with any body fillers or bondo and stuff uh in the places that need to be or need to have that done now when we come back over here to the passenger side we do have like a little dent right here and a little scratch um but i'm not worried about that because this whole passenger door needs to get replaced because of that that a horrible horrible mess right there so that whole door that can't even be saved it's got to go you can see right there on the front of the rocker panel on the passenger side definitely rotted out which was the same as what happened over there on the driver's side um, but the previous owner before me cut that little chunk out now obviously we just got done saying that i have not done body work or paint rust repair anything like that that kind of sketches me out replacing a rocker panel but i think that if i if i Take to YouTube, the place that teaches you everything, teaches you more than a college education will. I think that we could figure out how to put in a new rocker panel. Now this spot back here on the front of what would be the cab corner, that's still pretty solid. So we might be able to sand that down or get that down enough. But the only problem is, is that it's a pretty thin metal. So I don't know how much we can actually take off from there. And this thing doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, I want to clean it up more or less so that it doesn't look like that and has a good, uh, like a decent looking paint job on it. But by no means am I trying to get this truck cleaned up so that it's like show worthy and uh, trying to win trophies and awards. Because at the end of the day, it's still gonna be my daily driver and used for work purposes. And if I had a paint job that was that immaculate, then I would never want to use the damn truck for work. And that's what the whole thing is meant for. We'll have our time sometime down the road where we can pick up a second truck of some sort and that could be a project truck and we can try to make that as nice and as mint as possible. Now here's one spot of the body I know I can take care of. I think honestly with a good buff job on this, just run over the whole truck with a buffer, it would bring so much shine back because as it is when you wash it and get it cleaned up it really doesn't look bad and the paint shines pretty nicely considering the age of it and the imperfections in it so if we just literally got rid of the ugly rocker panel mess and the bits of rust that are starting to bubble and starting to to chip and flake off this truck actually would look pretty decent it'd be a, a nice looking work truck i should say i wanted to talk about the body stuff though and kind of show you guys that um and i've already kind of gone around the truck and done this once before but since then some other areas have popped up so wanted to bring that stuff up and to the channel's attention and again ask people if they've done body work and what kind of pointers can you give me because i'll be the first to tell you and i've said it before i'm not a know-it-all and i don't know how to do everything and there's a lot of stuff that i'm still learning um whether it be with diesel stuff in general, diesel trucks in general, the Cummins platform in general, or even just basic maintenance and general maintenance type of stuff. Um, there's still things that, you know, I don't, I don't know, or there's other ways of doing, doing things that maybe I do know how to do, but someone else may have a better and different way of doing it. But we're gonna end on that note as far as the body for the 24 valve goes. That is all from me though. Just uh, told you guys I would walk around the truck and show you the new areas that were kind of poking out and the little bits of flaws that are on my truck. And not even little bits, man. There's a lot of flaws on my 24 valve. I know it's not the worst and it's not the ugliest out there, I love it and I think that it looks good no matter what, but the rust does make me upset. But at the end of the day, I see second gens driving around here all the time that are a hundred times worse than mine. So I really, I don't have anything to complain about. 
Uh, my truck is solid. It runs awesome. It's uh, it's just mechanically sound, and uh, I, I love you, old girl. I do, I do. Hit that like button on your way out. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. Join the family here on Pure Panorama, and I will see you guys in the next video, and we will be working on the frame. We'll be getting the oil feed fitting in because I honestly, I'm not even gonna lie. I just don't feel like working on the truck tonight, so that's why I'm just kind of talking a lot so oil feed fitting frame and we will find some other stuff to get done on the truck as well i will see you then peace we got our first p.o box stuff here and i don't have p.o box listed in the description but this is uh from a buddy of mine chad meyer 73 who i mentioned in a previous video if you guys haven't checked this channel out you want to see a clean second gen, you need to go and check out Chad's second gen in his channel. Chad Meyer 73 I'll put it on the screen here. This is from him, so thank you, my man. These are, I believe, his stickers that he has for his channel, so let's check them out. Look at that, man. These are quality, too. These are some nice stickers, and I, I do believe he's got these for sale, too. So if you guys want to rep fellow people here on YouTube, your fellow Cummins crew, go get one of these stickers from Chad, this this is nice quality right here, and I think he sent me both styles. One of them is a vertical flag, and the other one is your old horizontal style. So we are actually going to be putting one of these right on the truck and representing our boy as we drive around New York. Boom, there you go, my man. You're right there under the thin blue line Punisher skull. Figure we're keeping the flags together. So like I said, go check out Chad's channel and uh, show him some love. He's got a wicked clean second gen. I just wanna keep